Hey guys, Candace Malcolm here. We are live with True North. I wanted to come live today because I wanted to talk to you about, I, I want to kind of look into this yellow vest movement. I just, it's one of those things I don't feel like the mainstream media is giving this protest group a fair shake. They are painting this organization as being fringe, extremist, far right, all of the sort of usual things that the media throw at kind of just general conservatives if you don't fall in line with the sort of mainstream liberal dogma. So, you know, I don't really know that much about the Yellow Vest protest movement. I will fully admit that. I don't know exactly who they are. I don't know any of them personally. I haven't met any of them. I am in the midst of trying to set up some interviews and trying to get a better understanding of who these folks are, what it is that they are demanding, why they're protesting. Um, but today's video and why I want to come live is I just want to sort of do a preliminary um, analysis of this organization and, and what, what it is they want and then kind of compare that to the mainstream media. So I, I'm sure everyone watching this is familiar with both the Yellow Vest uh, protesters as well as the media coverage. I'll just do a very, very brief overview. So there was a protest movement started in France. It sparked um, over anger and outrage about a carbon tax that was set to uh, drastically increase the price of fuel. So taxi drivers in France are required to have a yellow vest in their car um, for emergency purposes and to identify themselves. So the protest kind of naturally sprung about uh, for people who work for a living as drivers. And so they, they took their yellow vests, they began a movement, it grew drastically. Um, it was mainly peaceful, although there was certainly some violence and there were some clashes with the French authorities. It became just a mass anti, uh, uh, a mass protest against French President Emmanuel Macron. And so basically it wasn't just about the carbon taxes, it was kind of a movement of working people against the sort of elite guard. And you could interpret that in a lot of different ways. You know, what the carbon tax was not necessarily just coming from French politicians. It was coming from something higher than that, the, the Paris Accord, the UN Paris Accord. So a lot of the anger and the frustration that I observed and, and the interviews that I saw, interviews that I watched uh, were people kind of fed up with what many people in North America call globalism or the globalist agenda of these sort of UN elites dictating policy, whether it be on climate policy or migration um, or any of the number of things that are plaguing Europe and France. Obviously, every time I go to Paris, I go once a year. Every time I go, I hear more and more concerns from people about terrorism. Terrorism is such a real threat in that city. Um, you can see the ramifications of ISIS and jihadist terrorism and the migrants um, that flooded into Europe everywhere you go. Um, there's massive security. There's sort of like airport style security at all the major tourist attractions in Paris. Um, my friends in Paris kind of, you know, everyone's, everyone's just distraught about it. They feel unsafe. They feel on edge. Um, you know, people in Paris love sitting out in cafes and sitting at restaurants as part of the culture. And there's sort of fear among that. And you can see they've created like guardrails and barriers so that cars can't get very close to restaurants anymore. And they're trying to push cars out of the city, which is obviously frustrating for people who drive for a living. So anyway, there's all these sort of cultural social issues in, in France. That's, that's where the original movement came from. It got picked up in Canada, I would say probably mainly in Alberta, where there's also just this sort of overwhelming frustration among people when it comes to the same kind of issues, um, elite policies, uh, so-called globalists or rule by elite that Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is so attracted to. So we, we know Justin Trudeau, he loves the UN, he's desperate to get Canada a seat on the, um, uh, as a rotating member on the Security Council. He, um, you know, goes out of his way, for instance, he wore that t-shirt and spoke at that conference, that calling himself a global citizen, and he kind of always takes the UN um, centered approach to public policy, be it climate, um, you know, he was eagerly signing on to the Paris Accord and condemned the United States when they left the Paris Accord, even though the U.S.'s carbon emissions have gone down. And then when it came to the global U.N. compact, he was, him and his government officials were sort of boasting about how they were playing a main role 
in it. So I, I see these things as kind of connected. If you live in Alberta, you're incredibly frustrated over the lack of a pipeline, lack of ability to get resources to market, and then the sort of ensuing recession that has come from that. So it's kind of natural to me as an observer that these things are all kind of tied together. The, the prime minister is focused entirely uh, on helping refugees and migrants. That's where his focus is. That's what they spend a lot of time talking about. That's where a lot of the resources are going. And in the meantime, they're just kind of neglecting Alberta and the economy, the sort of backbone, the engine of the country. And so th th those are sort of tied together. So there's been a number of protests, both the yellow vest protests and then just regular anti-carbon tax, anti-Trudeau protests that we've seen in Alberta for months. For months, there was the um, massive truck envoy that was up in Nisku near Edmonton, where there was thousands of trucks that were that were um, out of work, and so they were they created a convoy. Uh, there was huge protests in Calgary um, when Justin Trudeau was there last. I, I believe it was uh, November or December. Um, he was there. Bill Morneau, the finance minister, is there, and they, you know, huge protests of, of people. They, they weren't really yellow vests at that point, but now we're seeing these kind of weekly protest. And, and to me, it's, you know, they're peaceful protesters. It's a legitimate democratic movement. And so because I think that it is legitimate in, in the same way as, you know, when labor unions march or when, um, you know, the March for Life happens on, in, in Ottawa, the, the pro-life um, activists, anti-abortion activists, you know, those are all legitimate democratic movements. So is the Women's March. So, so is any number of March, and I think that the media needs to do a better job of objectively covering these things, you know, instead of um, instead of just writing off on group and putting a label on them and saying they're not legitimate because X, uh, why don't you try to listen to their concerns? And I think, you know, when it's a popular progressive or left wing cause like the Women's March, no one puts, tries to put any labels on them. Nobody um, points out some extremism or fringe elements that happen. And those kinds of rallies, not, not that I've seen, not kind of prominently displayed. And yet when, when there's a conservative group or a group on the right, that's sort of immediately the focus. So I just want to point out a couple of things. I mean, just, you know, if, if you're just sort of interested in learning about the yellow vests, do a quick Google search on the yellow vest movement. And what you see is, you know, mostly really negative coverage. So here, the first thing that comes up is Meet Canada's pro-oil, anti-immigrant Yellow Vest movement. CTV says, headline says, Yellow Vest in Canada bears no resemblance to the protesters in France. Um, <laughs> another Canada Land piece says the far-right grassroots movement taking over Canada. The National Post, which is supposed to be sort of a center-right publication. Credibility of Canada's fledging Yellow Vest movement threatened by extremists and fringe groups. And then a whole bunch of CBC stuff about how um, there's one about how the Yellow Vest movements, uh, the Yellow Vest rallies send the wrong message that um, the, something about the tone you need, you need to down. And then a bunch of stories, you remember there was a, a story about how <laughs> the, the CBC calls them crackpot. And um, yeah, there was that story about how there was a death threat um, against Trudeau on the Facebook page of one of these um, groups. Obviously, that's not good. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about peaceful protesters. And once you get into the sort of death threats and violence, um, that's no longer, I think, that's, a, that's a clearly no longer legitimate um, de democratic form that, that um, goes into the realm of, of, of criminal activity and not just free speech. But you know, just, you know, just the overview here showing how negative the coverage is. And then there is, of course, I want to show this video. This is from the CBC. And uh, whoops, I just lost it here. The CBC put up this video. Uh, I, I guess it was CBC comedy. And uh, <laughs> the, let me just see if I can find it here. The uh, here it is here. You've probably seen this. So this is this is how the Yellow Vest movement is portrayed. This is from their comedy show. The CBC is a state broadcaster in Canada, obviously, and they have a comedy show. So this is how they're portrayed. 
Well, he just bought a pipeline, and he's now passing over a billion dollars in support for the oil sector. How is that anti-oil? That's just what the Communist Broadcasting Corporation would say. Yeah. I like how, just to interject here, the host, so this is like a fake interview, and the host is like defending Justin Trudeau and saying that he is actually pro-oil because he, A, bought a pipeline, which he hasn't done anything with and hasn't even begun constructing on or you know the steps to approval the only reason he bought it is because the company that used to own it wanted out and so i mean that uh, using that as a point is kind of silly and then the other one was that he gave a billion dollars in corporate welfare and <laughs> to oil or to the oil um pi to the pipeline it's like that's not what people in alberta want people in alberta want to get back to work so it's just kind of funny that this even in their own comedy sketch the government broadcaster can't help but try to defend Justin Trudeau. Okay. Yeah. I don't need you. I get my news from Facebook. Yeah, yeah Facebook. Which reminds me, does anyone have a charger? Because my phone is dead. <laughs> okay, your your group is also anti-immigration. Yeah. And straight, the UN Global Compact on Migration is going to end this country. We can't let our country be changed by outside cultures. Where did the Yellow Vest movement start? France. Right. The signs at the rallies call for immigrants to so, stay. So, I mean, just right there, uh, like, like they, they, again, they can't help but portray Canadians, and especially people in this movement, as being stupid. Like, yokels, stupid. The guy needs a phone charger because he needs to charge his phone. He's so stupid, he can't even keep his phone charged. And then they're trying to say that they're against the Global Compact, but they readily admit that they kind of culturally appropriated this movement from France. Um, you know, it's, it, 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 this, is, this is just a sort of like exactly how mainstream media elites in Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa think of Canadians in Western Canada, think of working class Canadians, think of Canadians and uh, Albertans, people in Alberta. I, I mean, you can just see it. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's so blatant and it's, it's just so pathetic. Out of Canada. Is your group racist? No. Yeah. I, I mean... No, I mean, it depends. Who's that? So. Yellow Vesters, you stand up to Justin. Anyway, uh, you can see the clip we posted on True North Initiative if you can kind of stomach the state broadcasters. It's, it's just, you know, they would never do a clip like that um, against, again, like the Women's March movement or one of the left wing movements that you see. They would never do something like that about Antifa, which is actually a violent. Um, organization that in the U.S. has been deemed um, that they uh, their, their activities resemble or th their activities have been classified as domestic terrorism. And so, you know, when it's the right wing, when it's conservatives, when it's Albertans, the CBC feels like they have free range to just completely mock these people, um, sh portray them as just being the stupidest people under the planet. And obviously racist, because that's what it all boils down to. You can't protest the prime minister. You can't have an opinion on immigration. You can't have an opinion on pipelines without being, you know, the victim of name calling. So um, if, you, if you are opposed to a UN global compact on migration, it's because you are clearly a racist. And so, you know, you don't have to go very far to see what, what it is the mainstream media really thinks about Canadians, and of course, it's not just the CBC. I'll just show you just a little exchange I had with the journalist on Twitter here. I have to go through um, an outside source because this guy has now blocked me on Twitter. But th there was a uh, a radio host in Kamloops, British Columbia. His name is Brett Manier, and so back in early January, this is January tenth. Um, the Prime Minister Trudeau was doing those town halls across Canada, and he did a stop in Kamloops. I guess there were some protesters or some Yellow Vest protesters outside that, outside of that uh, event. And this radio host, who's supposed to be, you know, somewhat objective and honest as a journalist, he really hated these protesters. So this is a tweet that he wrote. And I'm kind of shocked that this tweet is still up there. It's still available on Twitter. He says, having the prime minister come to town and seeing just what gross, terrible human beings are out among us with their delusional conspiracy theories, racism, 
disrespect and total inability to engage in good faith conversation makes me want to get off this planet ASAP hashtag Camus. Okay, this is like a little dramatic, but like, it, you know, the idea that people who would protest the prime minister are gross, terrible human beings. And that somehow they're that they're they're like being led by conspiracy theories and racism and disrespect. And that makes this guy want to leave the planet. Okay, buddy. So, I mean, that's a little bit over the top, I think, to most people. And it's pretty harsh. I mean, if, if I was walking down the street, say I was going to an event with a politician that I respected or a speaker that I liked, like say I was going to a Jordan Peterson event. I really like Jordan Peterson. I go to his events when I can. Say I was going to his event and there were people outside protesting Peterson and they hated Peterson and they had their signs and they were chanting things and they were saying things that I totally disagreed with, but they were peaceful. They were peaceful and they weren't trying to, you know, block the entryway or they weren't provoking violence. They were just peacefully protesting. You know, I'd be like, good, you know, good on you. You have the right to peacefully protest, even though I totally disagree with you. And I probably wouldn't want to, you know, sit down and have a conversation with you just because you, you know, you don't seem like the kind of person that I would want to engage with. You know, I, I wouldn't immediately go to, you are a gross, disgusting um, human being, a terrible human being and that you are delusional and racist and you make me want to leave the planet like this is such a visceral reaction it's so unhelpful you know the idea is that we can disagree and still live side by side and not and you know it doesn't have to come to such drastic um outcomes that we can just disagree <laughs> and yet this guy seeing these yellow vest protesters he like triggered him so badly that he took to twitter to call them gross, terrible human beings. Those are those are Canadians. <laughs> those are working Canadians. Again, you might not agree with them. You might not think that they're the best people. You might not want to invite them over to your house. That's fine. <laughs> but you can't even be in the same planet as them or in the same city as them, the same country as them. I just, it really, it really bothers me when you get this kind of smug attitude from journalists and from leftists. I mean, this guy's a journalist, but he's clearly a leftist. You spend two minutes on his Twitter page, and you'll just see endless attacks against conservatives and endless attacks against Andrew Scheer, conservative leader. I mean, he clearly just doesn't like conservatives. Um, but, to, but to call people gross and terrible and then just immediately jump to racist, it's just so juvenile and so pathetic, frankly. So pathetic. And, and again, th I, th I think this is like a little snapshot. Same with that CBC video, this guy's Twitter. It's like a little snapshot into how so many mainstream media journalists in Canada view Canadians when they see the yellow vest protests. That's why you've got all of those headlines that were just overwhelmingly <laughs> negative. Again, let, let me just say, there are probably some pretty, um, some people in the yellow vest movement that I wouldn't, that I wouldn't agree with and that I probably wouldn't want to spend a lot of time with. People who just aren't my kind of person, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable around. I wouldn't want to, again, have them over to my house. You know, does that mean that they're not legitimate, that they're not a legitimate democratic movement? No. It, we, we have free speech and free assembly in this country, and we should be open to hearing ideas that we don't like. Okay, so first of all, yeah, yeah, there's probably some pretty bad, sketchy people that are on the fringe of the Yellow Vest movement. Does that mean that they're all bad and that we should write them all off? No. And, and look at any other movement, any other peaceful democratic movement, be it, uh, you know, examples I keep going to, the Women's March, or the March for Life, or, you know, any number of these protests, the people who, the Occupy Wall Street people, the Tea Party back in, back in 2010 in, in Washington in the U.S., you know, these people have political, you know, they, they have legitimate points, and, and they're a political movement, and we're allowed to do that. We live in a free society, and so to just completely write off an entire movement of people as being gross, terrible, and then referring to them as far right and fringe like the mainstream media does. I just think it's so unfortunate. And again, you could say that about any group. You could find crazy extremists, even in groups like the Women's March, and there are, and they have been exposed. There's vile anti-Semites and people who hate Jews um, in, the, in the Women's March. They explicitly did not allow pro-life activists to be part of 
the Women's March. So, you know, they, they, they have their own kind of fringe issues as well. Okay, so just one more thing I wanted to point out, and I think that finally someone's done some pretty good journalism on this issue. So uh, this is from the Rebel Media. They had one of their reporters, they have a new reporter out in Calgary, and he did something that I haven't seen any other mainstream media journalists do. He went to a Yellow Vest movement uh, rally in Calgary, and he actually talked to the people. So you can get their perspective in their own words, what they believe in and why they're protesting. And I, I think that this is really important. This should have been done a while ago by the mainstream media if they were actually really trying to do their job, which was, you know, try to understand what's happening in Canada, what's going on in the country, and get, and get to know, you know, what these various political movements are. So here, let's just listen to a few Yellow Vest protesters in their own words. Here we go. Identifying the problems that are going on in Canada, just not enough people know uh, the, the truth about what's going on, and uh, pe we just want to inform people, and that's what this is really all about, open, opening people's eyes. Uh, I see that um, the country is totally going downhill. I was born in Chile, and I saw what, how social, what socialism does to an economy. My family lost everything, they were expropriated, and uh, no fun, nobody has any incentive to work finally because the government controls everything, and uh, what's the point? So I don't want the same thing to... It's an incredibly articulate um, take from just a person on the street. You know, again, they, they portray these people as just being bumbling idiots who are so incoherent and probably racist. And you listen to someone like this, and it's like, wow, she has a very thoughtful perspective, very articulate and very specific. She fled socialism, and she's worried that socialist policies are creeping up in Canada. I, I, again, the fact that you can just write someone like this off as being far right racist is so insincere and so superficial. It's just, it's just mind boggling. It happened to Canada. That's why I'm here. That's what we're for too. We just want the immigrants that come here, that need to come here. We want to welcome them and we want them to become the way my grandparents became. They came from the Ukraine in 1909 and homesteaded in northern Alberta and worked and they become Canadians. Everything seems to be very, very positive here. And I come out to protest because I meet friends and we're all for a good cause and we're going to fight for Canada. Hey, can you tell me what brings you out here? Well, I have kids and I really care about my country. My country's been let down. Uh, it's really important. It's important, man. Uh, there's problems. We all know there's problems, uh, but we can't be scared to talk about them. That's, that's, that's all this is. Is we're just you know we we want the people to have a voice in 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 identifying and addressing the problems uh, that are facing the whole country and not to be demonized demonized and and criminalized for for you know talking just talking that's that's all Canadians want to do is talk but that's the problem let's so continue to be multi okay so so far <laughs> this is what I'm getting from these people. Um, they want immigrants to integrate into the Canadian society, and they don't care uh, about where the people are coming from. They just want them to join the Canadian family. That's a pretty mainstream position held, I think, by a lot of Canadians. They want to be able to voice their criticisms and have free speech. Uh, that's pretty basic and should be a universal value held among all Canadians. And then the one guy said, you know, he's got kids and he's worried about the future of his country. Uh, okay, that's probably a very <laughs> universal feeling for parents. And again, you know, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know like how this was edited. I imagine that, 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 you know, these people were the ones that were the most concise and raised the, the clearest points. That's why they were included in this video. But, you know, everything I've heard so far is pretty mainstream and pretty admirable in my opinion. So again, you know, that connection between these individuals that we're hearing, God bless them, um, and then that horrible portrayal from the mainstream media, there's just such a disconnect. It's, it's so, it's so interesting. Cultural in Canada, but let's become Canadians. That's all we want from them. And it doesn't matter what color, what, what it does, none of that matters with us. None of it. We just want to make the world better in Canada. And Canada's got to be number one. Canada number one. So, uh, I see you here with like, a smirk on your face and that. How was how was any of that racist? That was the opposite of racist. He literally said he doesn't care about the color of the person's skin or where they're from. He just wants them to come and and become Canadian. <laughs> and that's probably what liberals believe too. It's just 
Okay. Pat, can I ask you what brings you out to this protest today? Well, Trudeau has been in office for too long. He is uh, bringing in, uh, like, I'm, I'm fine with, like, a uh, you know, reasonable amount of immigration, bring in skilled labor and such, people fleeing tyranny, stuff like that. But when you're bringing in what, like, that uh, was 400,000, 500,000 people every year when the population of Canada is only about 35 million. Uh, soon you get to the point, uh, is it going to be like in Sweden where there's no go zones? I don't want that to happen. I don't think anyone wants that to happen. So even the guy wearing the Make Canada Great Again hat, the, you know, the hat that's so demonized. And obviously, you know, if you wear that kind of hat, the CBC will Im immediately write you off. You know, even even what he said, and and uh, you know maybe he wasn't the most articulate, but he, you know what what he said. I mean, he's a young guy, so pretty articulate for a young guy. But you know the idea that if you're a skilled worker, that's great. If you're really fleeing persecu persecution, that's great. But maybe just the overall levels are too high, given the population, which again, I would argue is a pretty mainstream position in Canada. So I'll just leave leave it at that. I think that you know, from those yellow vest protesters that we just saw, <laughs> there's nothing that really even strikes me as being controversial or extreme or far right. And I think it's unfortunate that the media doesn't give these people a fair shake or a fair chance. Um, you know, they have a legitimate point of view, especially, you know, folks in Alberta who are really suffering through hard economic times and they feel neglected. And Again, maybe, you know, you, some people in the mainstream media think it's not legitimate to tie economic concerns with concerns about migration, but to me, they're, they are interlinked when you have a government that's so focused, so heavily focused on prioritizing immigration, migration, refugees, enabling um, illegal immigration, facilitating it, spending all this money housing uh, migrants and refugees. That's, that's really the focus of this government. And then juxtapose that with the neglect of Western Canada and the economic side and imposing this carbon tax. Again, that's exactly what the French protest movement was about. That's, that's what sparked it in France as well, this kind of idea that there are these um, globalist forces that come above the national forces. So instead of the country caring about its citizens and putting its citizens first, we care about these global institutions and these global goals, be it the UN Compact on Migration, or the Paris Accord on climate change, you know, they both have a similar framework and they're both similar model, you know, a bunch of elites get together in a room, set goals that they are going to impose on everyday people across the world. And those everyday people don't have a say and they don't feel represented and they feel ignored and neglected. I think that that's really the core of what I'm seeing. Again, I'm not part of the Yellow Vest movement in any way. I haven't been to any of the rallies. I would uh, be interested in talking to some of those folks, maybe setting up some interviews. So if you know anyone who's involved and who might want to um, talk to uh, one of our reporters at True North, uh, send me a message, let me know. Um, we have an email address, I think it's tips at truenorthinitiative.com. So you can send an email there, T-I-P-S at True North. And um, yeah, we'd be happy to, you know, try to understand even more what it is that this movement is all about. And unlike the mainstream media, we'll be fair and balanced. Um, you know, we're not going to completely cover it from a positive perspective if there's negative things or if there's things that aren't great, you know, we'll include that. But at, unlike the mainstream media, we won't paint the entire group as just being a bunch of far right racist extremists, blah, 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 blah. I think that those terms, by the way, are just getting so old that they don't mean anything anymore. Like, if you talk about immigration, you're racist and you're a bigot. And sooner or later, those words just lose their meaning. And that's where we are, uh, especially with mainstream media and federal government officials constantly throwing those words around. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, don't forget to check out True North, uh, the group that I started. We have a new website called tnc.news, tnc, the letters, dot news, and that's where you can find all of our reporting. We do daily reports focused on issues related to immigration, national security, and then broader issues as well. And we have a series of investigative reports that we're doing on 
um, covering a lot of issues, the migrant crisis, the uh, illegal border crossers coming into Canada, um, some of the issues with the Syrian refugee resettlement program. We've got a lot of content on there, so you're going to want to check that out. And thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.